In the last lesson, we took a look at formatting some of our echo statements with an HTML tag. And what I want to do in this particular lesson is just rearrange our code a little bit. What I want to focus in on is since we've introduced some HTML tags, is just introducing where HTML would go within our page. And so I'm going to rewrite the code a little bit here and just put in HTML as my opening tag. And I'm going to go ahead and close HTML down here. And typically when we write PHP, it's going to be in an HTML type of structure. And so what we'll do now is we're going to go ahead and have the head tag, which is where the metadata typically goes within a web page. The only thing that you physically see on a page that goes in the head tag is going to be the title. And the title is usually going to appear now in the tabs for most current browsers where you see like localhost here. I can change the name of that to whatever I want. And basically I can add the title tag here in the head section. So we're not going to deal with the head section here at all for the PHP course. What we are going to deal with is what's in the body section. And the body section is important because that is where our HTML code is going to exist. And so now that I'm here in the body tag of my HTML page, I'll go ahead and just open up a PHP tag here. And that's going to start it. And then I'll go ahead and put an ending one here. And so you have to put your delimiters within the body tag of an HTML. HTML page. So now that I've got that structure set up, I'm going to kind of work with that one from now on so that we can always kind of see where it fits into a typ typical page. So let's go ahead and work with the variables now for this lesson. And the variables, there's five different types that I want to work with. And this is a loosely typed programming language. Basically, it's really easy to create variables and to work with them here in PHP. Couple rules to keep in mind, we have to start variables with a dollar sign. So we're gonna be working with that a lot. So I'll go ahead and type in a dollar sign here with my PHP code. And the other rule that you really have to keep in mind is that a, P, uh, a variable has to start with a letter or an underscore. It cannot start with a number or any other symbol. And there can be no spaces at all within the name of our variable. So there's just some rules to keep in mind whenever you're creating variables. I typically start my variables with a capital letter and then if I have multiple words I usually keep those words crunched together but I just put a capital letter for each one of those words and so we're going to start off by creating some variables but we're going to do what's called declaring a variable and that's just typing in the dollar sign and then the name of the variable and so I'm going to go ahead and start off with one called hours and we're going to do a simple uh, page here where we're going to have hours a rate um, the name and then some other variables that deal with paperwork and the data would check just to see different types of um, data types that are are for variables here within PHP. So I'm going to start off with the dollar sign hours. What this does is it creates a spot in our computer's memory whenever our page is compiled. It creates a spot there and it's a container that can store data. And we can put all kinds of different data types into it. And in PHP you don't have to tell it what data type it is. This is part of that loosely typed programming language. You just type in a value and it will automatically know or assume as to what data type you wanted to work with. For instance, I'm going to type in hours and I'm going to set it equal to, and this is what's called initializing the variable, equal to something. I'm going to type it equal to 40 and put a semicolon. Now when we work with numbers, you just type in the number alone. So we don't have to put anything special around the number 40, it's just dollar sign hours equals 40. And so that's going to be what's considered an integer data type. Basically an integer is going to be a negative or positive whole number. And you can see that there 40 is a whole number. And so we can work with negative and positive numbers for uh, integer data types. The next data type, I'm going to go ahead and create another variable called rate. I'm going to set it equal to, let's just assume that we're getting a rate of $20.5 an hour. Now. On this particular one, this is what's called a floating point number, and it's a decimal number. We can have positive and negative decimal numbers for this data type, and the only thing that we did different was just add, introduce a decimal number. Now keep in mind, if you have numbers that are larger than a thousand, you do not put commas in there. And I said that this was a dollar amount. You do not add any symbols either with numbers. You have to leave it just a plain number. The only thing you can introduce is the negative, uh, the negative and the decimal point value itself. So keep numbers very simple, no commas, no um, formatting with dollar signs or anything else like that. So that's our rate and that's a floating point number. The next one that I want to introduce is what's called a string. And I'm going to go ahead and put my name in there as a string. So I'm going to put in a dollar sign name. We'll set it equal to and I'll just go ahead and type in my name. And notice that when I'm typing this in we have double quotes around it. 
Um, this is what's called a string, which means all of our letters are strung together to make one object. And you can see that, that I do have a space in here. We can put symbols, we can put all kinds of things. Anything that falls in between those double quotes are going to be considered a string. And so I have to remember when I'm working with letters or symbols that it has to be put in there with a string. Now there's two exceptions to that. Let me go ahead and show you the next first exception, and that's if it's a Boolean. For instance, I'm going to go ahead and create a variable, let's see, I'll call it paperwork. And this will basically just be a Boolean, meaning whether or not it was turned in, yes or no, or true or false. And so what we do with Booleans is we use the keywords true and the keywords false. And I'm going to go ahead and set it equal to true. Now true looks like a string. However, it turned blue on me when I was typing it in there. Uh, however, it's not a string. It's actually a keyword. It's a Boolean meaning uh, yes or true or it does exist. And so that's going to hold the value of 1 if it does exist. And if it doesn't exist, it's a value of 0. And so that's our Boolean language. And it's, kind of, it's the same thing as for binary. You either have a 1 or a 0 in binary numbering system. The last data type that I want to talk about is null. And I'll just go ahead and put, let's just put date of check. Let's just say we don't know what that is yet, but we're going to go ahead and declare the variable, but we're not going to have anything in it. And what we're going to do is call this one null, and it's a keyword. You can see that I typed it in there and it turns blue on this one. And I'll end it with a semicolon. And that keyword basically means it's empty. There's nothing in it. And it's a lot different than the word zero, with like zero. I'll, sometimes a lot of people have confusion with the zero because zero is neither one or two or any other number, but zero is something. And so if it's something, it's not null. Null is empty. Uh, so that's just a tricky type of data type that some people work with as well. And so now that I have all my data types here, what I want to work with is actually um, displaying them and showing you what happens with them. And they're pretty easy to work with. The only one we can do calculations on are going to be number data types, either the floating point number or the integer. So let's go ahead and I'll type in an echo statement. And I'll go ahead and put dollar sign hours. I'll end that with a semicolon. I'll go ahead and do another echo statement. We'll put in there dollar sign rate. And I'll end that with a semicolon. We'll do another echo statement. We're going to go ahead and echo dollar sign name. End that with a semicolon. And I'll go ahead and echo out the paperwork too. So we'll put a dollar sign paperwork. And I'll end that with a semicolon. And the last one is to echo out dollar sign date of check. And I'll go ahead and end that with a semicolon. Now just to show you that we can do math on those, I'm going to go ahead and do one more echo statement below this. And I'll just go ahead and put dollar sign. And we're going to go ahead and put hours. And we'll just say times. And we'll go ahead and add in there dollar sign rate. And that will do the math for us. And so let's go ahead now. And if I hit save and I try to refresh my page, I'll tell you right now that it's going to be all put together because we don't have any break tags in there. So in between these, I'm going to go ahead and echo out a break tag. So let's go ahead and put a break tag in here. And I'll end that with a semicolon. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. Use control C. And then I'll just go ahead and paste them all with control V as in Victor if you're not familiar with the key combinations. There we go. And then we'll have break tags in between them all. So let's go ahead and save that and now refresh it. And let's talk about what we have here. The first one comes out 40. So we were able to echo that right there or basically display the value of that variable. And then we've got below that one rate. And you'll see 20 and a half shows the rate. We can echo out my name. You can see my name being echoed out there. We echo out paperwork. Now paperwork is a Boolean, so it's either true or false. So it doesn't say the word true. It'll have either a one or zero, and a lot of times it doesn't show anything if it's going to be false. Date of check was a null, basically there's nothing there, so it doesn't display anything. And then rate, is, or this last one here is rate times hours, is going to go ahead and do the math or multiplication for those two variables, the hours and the rate. And so this concludes the video on creating different variables and, and working with different variables and understanding the different variable types that are out there within PHP.